is logic a law of the universe, or is it just a set of rules we made up inside our own heads? This is a big question. It feels like it should have a simple answer, but it doesn't. It's one of those questions that pulls at a loose thread, and the more you pull, the more the universe seems to unravel. On one hand, it seems obvious. Of course logic is a law of the universe. A rock is a rock. It cannot be a rock and not a rock at the same time. If you drop it, it will fall. One event causes another. The universe seems orderly. It follows patterns. It makes sense. Our entire existence is built on this assumption. We build bridges, assuming the laws of physics, which are intensely logical, will hold. Um, we write computer code based on strict rules of if-then statements. We navigate our daily lives with the basic understanding that things are what they are. This feels as fundamental as gravity. But on the other hand, who says so? We are human beings, a specific species of ape on a small planet. Our brains evolved to help us survive. Recognizing patterns, like if I see those stripes in the grass, it might be a tiger, is a useful survival skill. So is our logic just an evolutionary tool that got really sophisticated? Is it a human system, a product of our language and our brains that we project onto the universe? Maybe the universe itself is just a chaotic, buzzy mess of reality and we impose the clean lines of logic on it to keep from going insane. So which is it? Is logic discovered, like a new continent? Or is it invented, like a hammer? Let's start with the first idea. Logic is a real fundamental property of existence. It's out there waiting for us to find it. The strongest case for this comes from math and physics. Think about the number pi. It's the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. It's, it's a precise, unchanging number. It's 3.14159 and so on forever. We didn't invent that ratio. We discovered it. It's an inherent property of what a circle is. Any intelligent being anywhere in the universe, if they investigated circles, would find the same number. It's a universal truth, and math is just a form of pure, formalized logic. If math is universal, and the universe is described by math, then logic must be universal too. When Einstein came up with emx2, he wasn't making a suggestion. He was describing a fundamental relationship that was already there. The equation worked. It predicted the energy released by nuclear reactions with terrifying accuracy. The universe behaves mathematically, it follows rules, these rules are consistent and predictable. What is that, if not logic in action? This idea goes way back to the ancient Greeks, especially Plato. Plato believed that ideas like justice, beauty, and even treeness were more real than any particular just act, beautiful object, or individual tree. He called these perfect ideas forms. They existed in a higher perfect realm. The physical world we see is just a shadow or an imperfect copy of this realm of forms. For a Platonist, logic and math are like that. They aren't just in our minds, they are part of this perfect abstract reality. The law of non-contradiction which says something can't be both true and false at the same time and in the same way isn't a rule we made up. It's a feature of reality itself, a law as real as the speed of light. When a scientist conducts an experiment, they are making a bet on this idea. They assume that if they run the same experiment under the same conditions, they will get the same results. Uh, this is the principle of causality. A cause is B. This is a logical relationship. Without it, science would be impossible. The universe would be random magic. But it's not. It's an orderly causal system. The sun rises because the earth rotates. The ball falls because of gravity. The logic seems to be baked into the fabric of space and time. Think about how strange it is that math works so well. A physicist named Eugene Wagner called it the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the natural sciences. Why should abstract symbols and rules we invent in our minds perfectly describe things like planetary orbits and subatomic particles? It's a deep puzzle. One possible answer is that it's not a coincidence at all. Our minds didn't invent math. They discovered a language that the universe was already speaking. We're not imposing our logic on the universe. We're learning to see the logic that has been there all along. If an alien civilization exists on a planet orbiting another star, they won't speak English. Their biology might be completely different, but they would have to understand physics to build a spaceship. They would have to understand that if you fire a rocket engine in one direction, you will accelerate in the opposite direction. They would have to understand that a triangle has three sides. These are logical mathematical truths. They seem inescapable. In this view, logic isn't human. It's just a property of reality. So that's the case for logic as a law of the universe. It seems strong. It's the foundation of all our science and technology. 
it's the reason we believe the universe is knowable at all. But there's a completely different way to look at this. What if logic isn't out there in the world? What if it's in here in our heads? This argument says that logic is a human construction. It's a tool. It's a very good tool, the best one we have, but it's still just a tool. A hammer is great for hitting nails, but that doesn't mean the universe is made of nails. Our logic is great for making sense of the world, but that doesn't mean the universe is inherently logical. This starts with biology. Our brains didn't evolve to contemplate the ultimate nature of reality. They evolved to help us find food, avoid predators, and reproduce. A brain that can make simple, logical deductions has a survival advantage. A is A this is a berry, not a rock. A is not not A. This place is safe. It is not dangerous. If A, then B. If I hear a rustle in the bushes, then I should run. These are the building blocks of logic. And they are deeply practical. They help an animal make a mental model of its environment that is good enough to survive. We, as humans, just took this basic toolkit and refined it over thousands of years with language and philosophy. We created formal systems like Aristotelian logic and symbolic logic, but the foundation is still this evolved survival mechanism. We think logically because it helps us stay alive, not because the universe commanded it. Because language plays a huge role here. Our logic is deeply tied to the structure of our sentences. Subject, verb, object. Statements that can be true or false. The cat is on the mat. This is a proposition. It can be tested. But does the universe itself deal in propositions? A cat on a mat is just a collection of atoms in a certain arrangement. It isn't true or false. It just is. We are the ones who come along and apply these labels, these binary categories to reality. Our logic needs these sharp divisions, true, false, yes, no, on, off. But maybe reality itself is more fuzzy, more continuous. The philosopher Immanuel Kant had a powerful idea about this. He said, we can never know the world as it truly is in itself. He called this the noumenal world. We can only know the world as it appears to us, through the filters of our minds. He called this the phenomenal world. He argued that concepts like space, time, and causality aren't features of the world itself. They are structures in our mind that we use to organize all the sensory information that floods in. Yes, it's like we are all born wearing a special pair of glasses. These glasses organize the chaotic light and color into coherent objects in three-dimensional space. We can't take the glasses off, so we can never know if the world is really three-dimensional. All we know is that we can only perceive it that way. Logic for Kant would be part of those glasses. We don't discover a logical, causal world. We perceive the world through a logical, causal lens because that's how our minds are built. We impose logic onto reality. We can't help it. It's the operating system our brain runs on. This is a profound and unsettling idea. It suggests we are trapped inside our own minds, unable to ever make direct contact with raw, unfiltered reality. Our science isn't discovering the laws of the universe, it's just mapping the consistent rules of our own perception. And then, in the 20th century, physics threw a massive wrench into the whole thing quantum mechanics. At the everyday scale of rocks and trees and cats, classical logic works perfectly. A cat is either in the box or not in the box. It can't be both. But when you get down to the level of electrons and photons, things get weird really weird. A particle like an electron doesn't have a definite position until you measure it. Before you look, it exists in a cloud of probabilities, a superposition of all possible positions at once. In a way, it's in many places at the same time. The famous thought experiment of Schrodinger's cat illustrates this. You put a cat in a box with a radioactive atom. If the atom decays, it triggers a device that kills the cat. The decay is a quantum event, so it's completely random. Until you open the box and look, the atom is in a superposition of both decayed and not decayed. This means the cat, whose fate is linked to the atom, is in a superposition of being both dead and alive at the same time. This seems to shatter the law of non-contradiction. Something is both A and not A. How can that be? Our brains can't really picture it. Our classical logic rebels against it. Some physicists and philosophers argue this proves that the logic of the universe is not our human logic. The fundamental level of reality operates on a different set of rules, a quantum logic that seems strange and paradoxical to us. Our logic, the one that evolved on the plains of Africa to deal with lions and berries, is just a special case. 
it's a useful approximation that works well for big slow things, but it's not the fundamental law of everything. So now we have two compelling and completely opposite stories. One says logic is the bedrock of reality. The other says it's a tool in our minds. Is there a way to reconcile them? Maybe the problem is that we're asking the wrong question. Maybe it's not a simple choice between discovered and invented. Let's think about logic in a different way. It's not a thing, like a rock. And it's not just an idea like a fictional character. Maybe logic is a description of a relationship. It describes structure. Imagine you have a pile of bricks. The bricks are just bricks. But if you arrange them in a certain way, you get a wall. The wall nest is not in the individual bricks. It's in the structure, the relationship between the bricks. The logic might be like that. It's the language we use to describe the structure and relationships within the universe. The universe isn't a random soup of chaos. It has structure. An atom has a structure of protons, neutrons, and electrons. A star has a structure determined by gravity and nuclear fusion. An ecosystem has a structure of predators and prey. These structures are real. They are out there in the world. Our minds, which also have a structure, evolved to be able to recognize and understand these other structures. Logic, then, is the tool we developed for this. It's a formal system for mapping and describing structure. When we say a cannot be not A, we are describing a very basic structural feature of how we separate objects in our perception. When we use math to describe gravity, we are creating a very precise map of the structural relationship between mass, energy, and space-time. This brings up a useful analogy, the map and the territory. The universe is the territory. Logic is the map. A good map accurately represents the territory. If the map shows a mountain, you can go there and find a real mountain. Our logic and our science are very, very good maps. They allow us to navigate the territory with amazing success. We can build skyscrapers, send probes to Mars, and cure diseases. This is because our map corresponds to the territory in a deep and meaningful way. The territory is not random. It has a shape, a structure that can be mapped, but the map is not the territory. You can't sleep on the picture of a mountain. The word water won't quench your thirst. And our map might have limitations. It's drawn from a certain perspective, the human perspective. It might be an excellent map of the parts of the territory we live in the world of medium-sized objects at medium speeds, but it might be a poor map for other, stranger parts of the territory, the quantum realm, the inside of a black hole. This view allows us to have it both ways. Logic isn't just something we made up. It's a map that has to be accurate to be useful, and its accuracy comes from the fact that it reflects the real structure of the territory. So, it is discovered, in a sense we discover the features of the territory and update our map. But the map is still a human creation, it's a representation, an abstraction, it's invented. We choose the symbols, the language, and the rules of the map making, and we can have different maps for different purposes. Classical logic is like a standard road map, it's great for getting around town. But if you need to navigate the ocean, you need a nautical chart with different symbols and information. Quantum logic might be a different kind of map, one we need for the subatomic territory. There are also other systems, like fuzzy logic, where things can be partially true and partially false, which is a better map for complex human concepts like hot or cold. So is logical law of the universe? If by law you mean a rule that exists out there, written on some cosmic stone tablet separate from matter and energy, then maybe not. Uh, but if you mean does the universe have a deep, inherent, and consistent structure that our minds are capable of grasping and describing, then the answer seems to be yes. The fact that the universe has this kind of structure is the really amazing thing. It could have been complete, unintelligible chaos, but it's not. It's a cosmos, an ordered whole. And it produced us beings who can look at that structure and wonder about it. The relationship between the structure of the universe and the structure of our minds is the real mystery. We, we seem to fit the universe. Our thinking seems to resonate with the way the world is. So where does that leave us? The question is not just a philosophical game, it has real implications. If logic is universal, we can be more confident that the laws of physics we discover here on Earth apply everywhere in the cosmos. We can dream of communicating with an alien intelligence using the universal language of math. We can trust that the universe is, at, at its core, rational and knowable. If logic is a human or biological construct, we have to be more humble. Our knowledge is always filtered through our own minds. The universe might be stranger than we can imagine. Maybe an alien intelligence would have a completely different kind of logic that is incomprehensible to us. Our science is not a perfect mirror of reality, but a human painting of it. In the end, I think the map and territory analogy is the most honest way to look at it. We have a map. It's, it's a work in progress. We started with crude drawings in the sand. 
now we have the incredibly detailed and powerful maps of quantum field theory and general relativity. We are constantly exploring the territory and refining our map. Sometimes we find a new part of the territory that forces us to invent a whole new kind of map making. But we never get to see the territory without the map. We are the map makers. The process of mapping is all we know. So is logical law of the universe. It's the best description we have of the laws of the universe. It's the language in which those laws are written for us. It is the reflection of the universe's order in the mirror of the human mind. And maybe that connection, that reflection, is the most fundamental thing of all. The universe isn't just a collection of logical rules, and our minds aren't just logic machines. But there is a deep harmony between the two. The world makes sense, and we are the part of the world that makes sense of it. And that is an astonishing fact of our existence.